Joining me now is Chris Dornbos of E3 Metals. Chris, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I've been really keen to have this conversation with you because I, you know, when I was doing my research, I'm going, okay, petroleum-derived lithium. Do I have that correct? Is, yeah. is that the way to, to, to uh, characterize what it is that you're doing? It, it's an interesting um, <laughs> analogy. Yeah. We use it a lot. We're not actually producing lithium from oil. Um, there's a massive reservoir in Alberta. Yeah. That derived might be the, the most important word there is derived from a petroleum byproduct or or uh, what's, what's left from the process, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. what happens in, in an oil reservoir, these big, huge, uh, in, in, our, in our case, the Leduc Reservoir in Alberta, yep. um, they find oil, they produce the oil, it's only a small portion of the reservoir to begin with, uh, the rest is water. Yeah. And so a byproduct to producing oil is water, mm -hmm. uh, the lithium's dissolved in the water. The benefit we have is that this reservoir has been produced since the 40s when ExxonMobil discovered it, and so it's pretty much out of oil. There are some small pockets right. of production left, um, but the majority of what's left is the water. And it's a massive, like 40 kilometers wide, 160 kilometers wide, 250 meters thick. It is an absolutely massive deposit. Yep. Um, and, and containing lithium uh, that allows us to you know, build a project around. Well, when I saw that also you, that you're situated in Leduc, I went, yeah. oh my gosh, that's where uh, the oil discovery started in Canada, really. It was really. 1947, yeah. Yeah, and so there's a, there, as you say, there's a massive uh, reservoir there, and you get to then go in and, and deal with what would have been a, an after product and turn it into a future product. How cool is that? Yeah, I mean, it's, very, it's a very interesting value add story. Yeah. Um, and it is a bit interesting <laughs> that the first oil discovery was Leduc, and now, in you know the transition in Alberta right now, that you know diversifying the economy, moving away from oil, and not now completely. Obviously, like oil is a huge portion of Alberta's economy and will be for quite a long time. Right. But as you know, other commodities are available in the province. It, there's some irony there that it's it's the discovery mm -hmm. of the oil is the discovery mm -hmm. of the lithium. So. Well, and and you're working with Innovate Alberta, correct, yeah. uh, to help to develop this because of course there's this big push to say, okay, well, what else can we do with the product that is the foundation of our economy here yeah. in Alberta? So nobody's throwing up their hands and saying, okay, we're done. It's no, we're going to find the answers to yeah. the, the needs of the future. So how does exactly. the process work? Um, because for many of us, we go, well, hang on a second, this isn't the lithium story that I've been hearing. Yeah, so we produce the brine yeah. uh, from uh, the reservoir exactly like you would in oil and gas production. So okay. they're wells, you know, you take it out of the ground, you put it in a pipeline, you get it. It's a short distance to a production facility. In the oil and gas world, you're taking oil out of the water. Yeah. In our world, we're taking lithium out of the water. Huh. But the same principles apply. So for us, the infrastructure, the services, the skill set, everything exists in Alberta to develop this project. Um, and a very favorable uh, permitting regime in Alberta mm -hmm. uh, because it is something that's been uh, being conducted in Alberta since the 40s. So mm -hmm. very mature. A regulatory uh, body governing the lithium production as well, um, and so for us, the real advantage is uh, demonstrating a viable process to remove the lithium from the water, mm -hmm. and that's what we've been focused on for the past three years. Well, so much of lithium extraction, especially if you go into uh, areas in in South America, is through an evaporation process, and you're yeah. not following that, that exactly. protocol, are you? Yeah. You're going with ion exchange. Yeah. Explain what that means, and and then let's talk about your partner in this. Yeah, so the more the, the next sort of level of uh, lithium development, the next phase, uh, seems to be this direct lithium extraction, which we fall into. Yes. Um, so the antiquated way of doing it is evaporation ponds. Um, the more recent way has been, obviously, hard rock mining is very popular. Yes. Um, and Australia has been capitalizing on that um, in some of the deposits there. But the up and coming has been this direct lithium extraction. And what it really does is it allows us to chemically remove the lithium from the brine rather than using evaporation. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to strip the lithium out, uh, make a very clean, uh, what we call a, a lithium concentrate, a very clean product, mm -hmm. um, very minor impurities, very high grades. So we take it from 80 milligrams per liter in the raw brine to over 5,000. We remove all the impurities. Mm -hmm. And so, and o over 99% of them, so a high level. Right. And when you're making a lithium product, if you're making lithium hydroxide and you want to sell that, for your for top dollar, which is into the battery market, yep. you need to develop a very pure product, right. and that purity is how your price is, uh, you know, assigned to you and assigned to your product. So one yeah. thing, 
uh, let's just talk about how using the ion exchange uh, process speeds up the rate at which you're able to extract uh, yeah. the lithium. It's like, it's a dramatic difference. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. The whole process for us will take a matter of hours. Hours. And in mm -hmm. uh, a traditional evaporation pond, it's you, you put that water on the ground for two years generally. Yeah. And let the, let the sun do its work, and then you extract uh, the lithium out. And the biggest thing with those projects is that their big complicated step is now they have concentrated the lithium, but they've concentrated everything as well. Yes. And so for us, because we concentrate the lithium, but we don't concentrate any of the other elements in it, our cleanup step to get it to pure product right. is a lot smaller and a lot simpler and therefore uh, potentially a lot less expensive than a traditional uh, scenario. And you're producing lithium hydroxide, is that, that right? That is the plan, uh, is to go to lithium hydroxide. Which is where you want to be, rather than be a carbonate. Well, you know, the jury's still out, I think, in terms yeah. of what the product is going to be. Um, there are some uh, technologies that, that will continue to be prevalent that use carbonate. Yeah. Um, the more hydrogen-dense uh, batteries that we're seeing right now are hydroxide-based. Mm -hmm. I would say that the, bag, the battery chemistry is the biggest thing that's improving. Right. It's because of the improvements in battery chemistry that uh, the EV, ICE, you know, internal combustion versus electric car will have price parity. Yep is the chemistry is improving to the point where the density of the battery is so high, energy density of the battery is so high, yeah. that the cost to put them in the cars is being is drastically coming down. Mm -hmm. And that's chemistry, and what's going to be the next uh, sort of game-changing uh, battery chemistry for uh, the EV market is, I think it's still a bit up for debate. Right. Um, there's definitely some trends happening, and those trends seem to be hydroxide, but you know, we, we've kept the option open right now. It's not that uh, difficult to change at this point in the game mm -hmm. between making both, and you actually convert one to the other as well. Yes. And when we take a look at that battery market, right, we have a tendency to go to, uh, towards electric vehicles yep. in our mind, but but the uses or the need for electric uh, for lithium in electric batteries is ubiquitous. Yep. The number of major plants that are coming online just to produce batteries is skyrocketing. Oh yeah, they call them gigafactories, and they are everywhere and yeah. we're talking a planned production of 2.2 terawatts uh, ah. planned battery capacity yeah. in the next 10 years that's incredible yeah you know the, the amount of vehicles that that's going to power is and then how that's going to shape the infrastructure of what we drive is is going to be completely different in 10 years so with with you know it's always a, a major focus on the american market and with tensions between china and the united states and trade war and so on how important is it that you be a north american based uh, resource and be able to supply that market i think it's it's very important there's mm -hmm. not there's only one other north american lithium production today mm -hmm. um, and if everything goes well for us we might be the next yeah and we'll be the well, potentially the first canadian um, and if not the second and i think that's really important for a company like us because we can move that quickly. Um, and we're, you know, we've been participating in the last couple of days with the federal government on their strategic mineral strategy that's been signed with the United States for exactly that purpose because right. they've identified that some of these minerals, um, and in the US, lithium's included in this list for sure, um, is a, a, a really you know, impactful, uh, meaningful uh, development strategy to assist companies like us because uh, a lot of what's coming out of, um, in, or sorry, going into these batteries is not coming out of North America. Right. Um, and when you look at it, it's it's across the board in some of these industries, zeros, right. right? And the only one that is produced in North America of the battery metals, the main components is lithium, and it's there's one location. So <laughs> I think it's incredibly important, and, and that's with our partnership with Livent, which um, you know we've recently yes. completed. They're a Philadelphia uh, US-based company um, one of the larger lithium producers. And, you know, there's a lot of, obviously, synergies with that as well. Well, yes, they bring a, a tremendous amount of expertise and reach with them, don't they? They do, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're one of the a premier uh, technology provider, in, for themselves at least. Um, they have, they're absolute experts yeah. in, in making lithium products, not just carbonate, which they make in uh, South America, but they also um, make hydroxide mm -hmm. um, in multiple locations throughout the world. Uh, to meet specifications for the OEMs. Right. And so they have that expertise as well. And, well, and so they're absolutely critical for us. Well, and they're a pretty solid company. They're an offshoot of FMC. Yes, yeah. yeah. And so uh, they have a depth of uh, resources and talent that can be beneficial. Yeah. So where are you at right at the moment as far as the development of the company? What are the next steps over the next 12 to 24 months? 
So right now, the majority of our focus uh, is on the prove out of the technology that we've developed. Right. And the, uh, the agreement and the work that we're doing with Liven is focused 100% on that. So mm -hmm. they uh, invested up to five and a half million dollars US into the company. Um, and that money is going towards um, the development of our technology. Mm -hmm. um, and so with the, the culmination of that will be a pilot plant running in Alberta, paid for through that investment from Liven. Um, to demonstrate that we have a, uh, a viable product to take lithium out of the brine. Um, and so that's the next 12 months or so for the right. company. Um, we're working on our own development plan, so what happens on the other side of this is that you know, the lithium production is the, the critical piece, but the, the infrastructure that's required, which is something that we do every day in Alberta, still needs to be developed, and a, and a brine production plan still needs to be put together for the company yes. to deliver the product to the production facility that we're working with Liven on to sort of design at the moment and, and get that down the road. So um, the company's going to be spending the next 12 months itself on developing that, that plan. Mm -hmm. And that's going to lead us to do things like upgrade our resources to measure it indicated um, and, and put some costing together right. as well for that. So your long-term vision as far as the company is concerned, do you envision building this out or are you looking that you will vend into a, a larger player? I think that we have the potential to build this out in Alberta. Mm -hmm. You know, we can use a company like Canadian Natural Resources as an example. They started very small and they've grown now to a $30 billion company. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a, it's, a, it's a good example of what we can do in Alberta. Alberta is very good at taking um, small companies and you know, growing production, the, the industry intensive province, and, and getting them to, this, to that size. Yeah. And because we're sort of in a lot of ways similar to an oil and gas uh, company, in that respect and how we produce the fluid, I think that there's a big opportunity for us to do this ourselves. It would be nice to have a Canadian story. Um, we're obviously working with Livent. You know, after the pilot plant's completed, they uh, have the potential 19.9% of us. Yep. And so having that big backer on the lithium side is, is very important for us. But um, with that, I think that we can, we can develop this ourselves. And we're well, going to start slow and, right. and grow it up. So 20,000 tons and then you know, expand it to potentially 150,000 tons. <laughs> You know, normally you might be talking to a junior mining company and whatnot, and, saying, and they're saying, well, what we're doing is de-risking this project yeah. for someone else. But it's as though you're de-risking this for, uh, for future investors, not necessarily for a larger uh, uh, partner, because you're gonna, uh, you, can, you can envision building this out. Yeah, and we, yeah. our risk profile is a bit different than traditional mining companies, yes. right? Because most of their real large risk is back end. So it's on permitting, it's on, construction, it's on access, getting yeah. power to the site. Um, for us, because we're in the heartland of Alberta, we're grid roads every mile, we've got a main power line, we've got a main gas trunk line. <laughs> right. um, you know, there's Edmonton's available skill right set. there, Calgary's down the road. Red yes, Deer's yeah. the biggest service city in, yeah. in Alberta. We're 20 kilometers away from Red Deer. Yeah. Um, so we don't have that back end risk. All, yeah. all of our risk rate is, is what we're doing right now with Live End. Yeah. And once we accomplish this goal of ours, which is to prove out this technology through a pilot, um, the back end is really, you know, there's not no risk, yeah. but it's, it's significantly less. Oh, and so yeah. we're yeah. going to be able to therefore accelerate this project yeah. um, very, very quickly once we have piloted. Well, and then you're also in that unique position where you can reach out to North American producers yeah. who become your end, uh, end customers. It's, it's a very nice model that you're going yeah. from, uh, uh, you know, resource extraction through to production, th right through to delivery to, to yeah. your customer. And exactly, and as we you know, plan to produce either the, uh, a battery quality carbonate or battery quality hydroxide, we're actually doing what Canada just generally doesn't, uh, isn't as prevalent as is taking it to the refining step. And we do have yeah. that capacity in Canada, and it'd be nice to capitalize on that. And yeah. you know, we're very excited to, to make this a homegrown Canadian story and, and, uh, and go all the way to a product that we can sell directly to a customer and not make them um, an intermediate. And I would love to see the next step, and we were talking about this over the past couple of days on the strategic mineral str strategy side of things, is you know, developing a battery manufacturing ecosystem in Canada. Yeah. And, and, and with this partnership with the US, I think it's going to make it a lot easier because there's going to be components that we're just not going to be able to grow as fast as we would want in Canada. So the US-Canada collaboration is going to be very important to see a full cycle battery manufacturing industry grow 
in between the two countries, even yeah. Mexico as well. So. Wow, this is very, very exciting. I hope you'll come back next year and tell us that the plan as envisioned is unfolding. Well, and exactly. I hope that <laughs> next year we'll be talking about you know, deploying this pilot plant and, and how exciting that is for us. Right yeah. Now. So it'll be good. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank Pleasure you for meeting time. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. See you next time.